These are your text messages, Mr. McElroy, saying that you have a hot rod buddy. I could go to him and get some cash in your pocket on top of the damage repairs. Yeah, I said it. You were essentially dipping your toe in the water of some insurance fraud. I don't know a single person who hasn't tried insurance fraud <laughs> in their life. So ended up it didn't go anywhere, right? Because she didn't have insurance. Right. But that may have been where she got the idea I could make a buck off this. That's a strange twist, but okay. I also want to ask you about something else that I found to be one of the most interesting things I've read since I've been on the bench. You say that you went to Alaska and you were doing some work up there. Yeah. And a bear stole some money from you. You have got to explain to us how that happened. I was attacked by a bear and it ripped my coat off of me. And I had just left the bank cashing a $7,000 check, which was like two thirds of my fishing season and ran off into the woods. There was my friend, my coworker was standing next to me when it happened. A truck stopped, said, oh my God, you almost got eaten by a bear. We dove in the back of the truck and drove away. And I went looking for my money for the next day and I didn't find a piece of my jacket, a piece of a bear, nothing, it was just gone. And then this keeps happening where I keep getting bashed and talk bad about and it affects my money and it's been a struggle to get caught up. Let me ask you just as a practical situation, Ms. O'Connor, you want money from this guy. Why make it any harder for him to work? He still works there. So whatever my slander campaign, in his words, didn't work because he still has money and a job and I'm not getting any of it. Judge Corriero. Do you think the bear was staking you out? No, I just <laughs> happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Did you tell her about the bear? I haven't talked to her. Okay. You may have, you know, just created a situation for yourself by not keeping the line of communication open in a way that she would be more willing to extend time to you to, to pay back. Yeah. I, I don't have any anything further. Well, I do. Uh, so you, Miss O'Connor, claim that he's only paid you two hundred dollars. I see three eighty. The defendant provided proof. Yep, that he two hundred eighty and one hundred, three hundred eighty dollars. Okay, so three eighty. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay. All right. We're going to excuse the parties while we deliberate in this matter. Thank you both very much. Appreciate it. This courtroom is now in recess. Okay, so very interesting case, especially the, the part about the bear. <laughs> Ran off with seven grand, that's crazy. But he still owes the plaintiff. His claim about the defamation, had he brought a countersuit for defamation? Very close. I might have looked a lot harder at the claim that she had published to a number of people that got back to him. But he didn't have a counterclaim for defamation and it doesn't offset the debt owed. The defendant is responsible for the damage to the truck. The plaintiff paid the amount of $1,869. Give the defendant credit for $380. That leaves the plaintiff with $1,489. So we have a verdict. We have a verdict. We do. Okay. This court is again in session. Okay, so we've reached a uh, unanimous verdict. Ms. O'Connor, you let the defendant borrow your truck. Mr. McElroy, you got into an accident that was your fault. You also made a promise to the plaintiff to repay her for the damage. And this issue of whether she defamed you online or not is not something that we can consider because you didn't sue for that. The amount that was paid by the plaintiff was $1,869. We're gonna give you credit for the 380 that you paid towards that. And that leaves a balance of $1,489. So judgment is in favor of the plaintiff for that amount. And this courtroom is adjourned. It's true. It all happened. It was embarrassing that it had to get to this point. I knew I had to pay her. I have never done anything but help him. Some people just have a lot of hate in their heart. This is how our friendship ended. I tried to do the right thing. I am soured and scorned.